does the BDSM part of the Pride March really belong in the Gay Pride March? What specifically is gay about BDSM? Guys and girls both do BDSM, both straight and gay. It's not exclusively for gay people. In actual fact, it's just a kink. It's a kink that people have. And at what part of a kink needs to be marched literally in a parade down the street for everybody to see? In this episode of The Gay Bear, I'm going to be talking about my reaction to the Gay Pride reaction videos that I've seen on the internet this year. Now, before I continue any further, I'm going to say that lots of this is going to be controversial. Many of you aren't going to agree with what I've got to say, but I actually feel like I have to say it because, quite frankly, well, I'll just start. So, this year, I've seen many people making reaction videos to Gay Pride saying things like gay, pr gay pride has become outrageous, gay pride's gone too far, these people have no morals, there was sex open in the street, uh, there were naked people in front of children, people dressed up in pup masks being led down the street on leashes by their masters, there were furries hugging children and a BDSM pride march with masters and slaves and whips and chains. So. First of all, before I continue any further, I'm going to say that 100% I don't believe that any of this should be done in front of children. I believe that children need to remain children for as long as possible. I believe that children need to be protected. Um, being a child is the most innocent and idyllic time of your life and that needs to be maintained, protected for as long as possible even to the point of where I believe that smartphones should have a minimum age on them, uh, which I believe is 16, I believe should be 16. Um, I'm an English teacher, just in case you don't know, uh, and I've taught millennials, uh, Gen Z and the, upper, the top side of Gen Alpha. And I can tell you that I personally have seen a massive decline in their ability to concentrate um, for a prolonged period of time. I mean, to the point of where the upper, the, the top side, like the oldest part of Gen Alpha, they can't even not touch their phone for maybe like 10, 15 minutes before they like visibly have anxiety and border on having some sort of anxiety meltdown. Um, I believe that social media should have a minimum age on it of 16. And I believe that generally, I mean, the internet's not a nice place and I think that children should not be allowed to be to use it unsupervised until they're 16. So after I watched all of these outrage videos of people getting upset about all the stuff that happened at Gay Pride and how everybody needs to protect the children. Won't somebody please think of the children? I decided to actually sit down and watch as many Gay Pride marches as I could stomach. And I watched London Pride, I watched New York Pride, I watched Barcelona or Stitches Pride, and I watched San Francisco Pride. And to be honest, the vast majority of what I saw was just people having a really nice time. I saw the occasional weirdo walking around without any clothes on, uh, letting it all hang out, which I think is massively inappropriate just in general. I mean, yeah, uh, I saw some crazy guy dancing around in a leotard with the butt cut out, which kind of defeated the point of the leotard, but whatever. I mean, he seemed to be having a whale of a time. But the vast majority of what I saw was like perfectly acceptable. But what I did see, I did see the BDSM Pride March, and I did see the Pup Play Pride March, or the, and I did see the Furry Pride March, and it, it really got me thinking. And I, I want you to actually really consider what I'm about to say. Does the BDSM part of the Pride March really belong in the Gay Pride March? What specifically is gay about BDSM? Guys and girls both do BDSM, both straight and gay. It's not exclusively for gay people. In actual fact, it's just a kink. It's a kink that people have. And at what part of a kink needs to be marched literally in a parade down the street for everybody to see? The same thing with pup play. Now, okay, I've never met a female pup. 
I'm sure that they do exist, and the vast majority of them are gay men. But it's a kink. Why does it need to be paraded down the street for everybody to see and clap for? It should be something that is, again, confined to a bedroom or a designated space. The way I look at it is like this. If it can't be explained to a kid who sees it in an easy way, then it doesn't need to be in the gay pride march. Homosexuality is easy to explain. Some families have a mum and a dad, some families have two dads, some families have two mums. Some guys, sometimes you get two men that love each other, sometimes you get two women that love each other, and sometimes uh, you get a man and a woman that love each other. That's really easy to explain to a kid. It's, it's logical, they can go, okay, cool. How do you explain BDSM? If you see a kid looking at a pride march and there's a man and a woman going past and the man's on all fours and the woman is whipping his back or putting it like, he's kneeling on the floor and she's standing on him or leading him along on a dog collar or he's, as I saw, attached with a harness to a carriage and he's pulling it along with his mistress in the back. How do you explain that to a kid? If, it, if you can't explain it to a kid, in my opinion, it doesn't need to be in a gay pride march because it's a kink. Same with pup play. I saw guys walking down the street uh, leading their pup along with them, with the pups waving at the public or pretending to be dogs. How do you explain that to a kid? Like, well, some people identify as animals. Do they? Like, that's not, that's not a normal thing that we, that should be in a gay pride march. That's something that's a kink and should be confined to a bedroom or a private space or an event. It's not something like that, hap that happens on the day-to-day -day life as people walk down the street. Furries, again. Now, I don't really have a problem with furries. Um, I don't have a problem with furries. My, my problem with the furry thing though is it's not specifically gay. It's not confined to just being gay. You can have straight furries, gay furries, non-binary furries, male furries, female furries. It's not specifically gay. My question is this, when did all of this decide to be included in the Gay Pride March? Was there a meeting? Was anyone invited? Because in my opinion, Gay Pride back in the day, and I am old, but Gay Pride back in the day used to be about equal rights. I grew up in a time where being gay was shameful. We were the butt of every joke on TV. We were portrayed to be weak. We were portrayed to be immoral. We were portrayed to be perverted. We were told we were morally bankrupt and we were going to hell. And we could be fired from our jobs. We could be denied work for, for being homosexual. We could be beaten up in the street or we could be murdered. I worked in one of London's busiest gay bars in 1998, 2000. And when the night was over and the doors were locked, we all used to leave together because it was safety in numbers. And we all checked that we all got home. I drove, so I used to give people a lift home to their front door and check that they got in. <sighs> in the UK, it was illegal for teachers to talk to a student who they felt might be struggling with their sexuality, even if they felt they feared for that child's safety like because of they want to unalive themselves or something like that it was seen to be promoting homosexuality so that was the purpose of gay pride the purpose of gay pride was to fight for equality we wanted to be regular normal people so we wanted to be able to buy a house with our partner have equal rights at work be protected maybe get married adopt some kids and just live our lives in a normal way we wanted it to just be accepted like Marjorie and John live next door Frank and Steve Frank and Steve live on the other side and there was no big issue and that's what we wanted and let's be honest we won we won that fight we are now totally accepted by the vast majority of countries and societies around the world. And now it really makes me wonder, what are we still fighting for? Because honestly, when I watch Gay Pride now, it's becoming a parade of sexual kinks where people get to walk down the road with their pup or they get to walk down the road with their slave 
I'm actually at the point now of where I think we all need to take a real hard look at gay pride and see actually is this how we want to be portrayed to the rest of the world? Because I can tell you that the people in the BDSM part of the Gay Pride March, they do not represent me. The furry side of people in the Gay Pride March, they do not represent me. And the pup play people, they don't represent me either. The more I watch Gay Pride and the more I look at all of the different types of genders and the unlimited amount of pronouns and things like that, I actually feel less attached to the gay pride movement than I ever have felt before. But that's just what I think. I'd like to know what you think. So why not leave me a comment down below and tell me, do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think my opinions are far too restrictive or do you think I'm bang on the money? And while you're down there, why not hit the like and subscribe button because I make videos like this every single week. Hey there, thanks for watching my video all the way to the end. If you like that one, then there's a good chance that you'll like one of the other two which are currently being displayed on your screen. Or you can push the circle round button of my face and that will subscribe you to my channel. Hope you have a great day.